your own uh, words? News 12 at 6 o'clock. Violent. Tonight, like pounds of cocaine, weed, and enough fentanyl to kill millions off the streets of Augusta and locked away. Operation No Loyalty took two years and two phases to get this big bust today. Tonight, Richmond County deputies are saying the gang trap money with links to the Bloods are the drug dealers, and they're very dangerous people as well. And with almost 60 arrests, Hallie Turner tells us more arrests could be on the way. Well, investigators see 15 pounds of fentanyl, which is enough to kill. Not just about taking down the ringleader, it's making sure no one fills their seat. Do you think that Augusta still has a gang problem? <laughs> Absolutely, we have a gang problem. And law enforcement is trying to get a handle on it. The amount of drug is itself is alarming, but what's more alarming is when you get a, a group of individuals that are operating together as an organization, that has a lot more of a dramatic impact on a community. For Augusta, Chief Clayton says one of the big players is the trap money gang. These are guys that are involved in homicides, they're involved in aggravated assaults with guns, they're involved with other violent crime and other property crime like stealing guns and financial fraud. Operation No Loyalty has led the Sheriff's Office, the GBI, FBI, and several other agencies to seize more than 35 pounds of cocaine, 15 pounds of fentanyl, a pound of meth, 277 pounds of weed, more than $400,000, and 62 guns. More than 50 are behind bars, but Clayton knows they don't have everyone. We never, ever get what I will tell you is that when you take out most of the organization, it has a crippling effect on the, the gang. Clayton says Trap Money is a hybrid gang with national affiliation to the Bloods Gang, Inglewood Family Gang, Sex Money Murder Gang, and 59 Rim Bloods Gang, who prey on the poor. If you've ever noticed, we have a lot of different housing projects, for example. And these are the people that drug dealers and gangs, they prey on the most. So they're launching phase three now to get to the root of the problem, which could lead to widespread arrests as far as Houston. The message I would like to send to the people out there that are gang bangers, if you're going to continue, we are coming after you. And your number is going to come up. It's just a matter of time. And as we're waiting to learn more about phase three, investigators are keeping those details limited for now, but we'll keep you updated. Certainly understandable, some pretty sensitive material there, but thanks for the update. How are we going to see all of that off the streets? Taking a look outside over Grovetown. To the week, we'll have that in the full forecast coming up in just a little bit. Thank you, Riley. Tonight, investigators are still working to solve two separate deadly hit and runs that happened just a mile apart from each other Saturday evening. Here's a map of the area. The first happened at Lumpkin Road and Fleming Drive. The second one just over on Richmond Hill Road, almost back to back. Sydney Hood joining us live from the scene of that first accident. So, Sydney, what do we know about these two cases? We know that both took place early Saturday evening and both took place near busy roads, but the one question we still do not have the answer to is who hit these two. It's no surprise to see cars zipping past each other on Lumpkin Road. Beside the noise from the road are quiet neighborhoods with houses trying to figure out what happened in their backyard Saturday evening. Around 8.20 Saturday night at the corner of Lumpkin and Fleming Drive, Joni Mitchell, a 38-year-old wife, mom, friend, was riding her bike when a car hit her and took off. She died that night. About a mile down the road on Richmond Hill Road, Broderick Parker, a 39-year-old son, brother, and friend, was hit and killed. The coroner says he was walking along the busy road. So far in 2023, the coroner's office says nine pedestrians have died. Last year, seven died and four the year before. Both of these recent cases happened within an hour of each other. The only thing left to figure out here is who, how, and why. And we did reach out to the sheriff's office to try and get those answers. As soon as we hear them, we will let you know. Interesting cases and a real mystery there, Sydney. Thanks for the live update there along a very busy Lumpkin Road. Laura? A found
founding member of T-Bone Steakhouse has passed away, according to their Facebook page. Prayers and memories are flooding the page for Mark Cummins, the man on the right of your screen. They say he passed after a battle with cancer, quoting that Mark was their inspiration and will always be in their hearts. A presidential candidate is stopping in Augusta this weekend. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will make a stop at the Augusta Convention Center Saturday at 1 p.m. Kennedy just announced today he will run as an independent candidate. That ends his challenge to President Biden for the Democratic nomination. It came to him in a vision in the middle of the night, and now that vision is reality and helping dozens of men see what life can be like sober. How the Game Changers Foundation is finding solutions to addiction. Next on News 12 at 6 o'clock. And we are expecting another cool night down into the 40s, and rain chances remain slim tomorrow, but going up for the rest of the week. We'll have that full forecast next. Here's a full look at our seven-day forecast. Once again, a beautiful Tuesday on tap, but make sure you have that umbrella close by between Thursday and Friday. Will do, Riley. Thanks a lot. We first told you about a vision a local landscaper had to build a substance abuse recovery center. That was back in 2019, but that vision now is a reality. It's called Game Changers. They have a couple of houses on 150 acres in Plum Branch, South Carolina, and more than 60 men have already come through that program. It's changing lives by putting God at the center of the recovery process with the success stories to prove it. And now they need your help as they find solutions to make sure these men continue to find success on their new path. Right now they're having a class and learning how to get their lives right. What's the only step you have to do perfectly? The guy behind the podium teaching, one of the many success stories. He's been clean for more than two years. He just got his law degree back. Now he's teaching others from a place of experience, which is how this entire place began. I had a addiction problem from 15 to 28 and uh, got clean and was clean for a long time and God just finally put a call in my heart to start giving back and uh, that's when we found this piece of land and we started to build it out. It's come a long way. They now have two houses for lodging on the property. There's three ponds where the guys can fish and tons of land where another success story, Adam Sellers teaches the guys who want to learn how to hunt and manage the land. You got to get healed here and here first. He knows firsthand because he hit rock bottom before coming here a couple of years back. I knelt down at the foot of my bed and I just threw my hands in the air and I said, I'm done. Either you kill me or you fix me, one of the two. But I can't go any further like this. There, at the end of his rope, looking at a painting with the words, Be still and know that I am God, everything changed. Something miraculous happened in that moment. The fear of death that I had been living with for so many years um, left me. And I had no need to uh, tranquilize myself basically you know and I knew at that moment something had to change and, and I heard a voice tell me don't ever touch a bottle again and he hasn't instead of pouring himself a drink he's now pouring into guys just like him lost and looking for salvation when you get to that place he's right there ready to pick you up and do it for you the next step for this program is teaching guys what to do with their lives once they've done the hard work of earning them back you get this black sheep mentality from society. We're really hoping the community can get involved. A lot of these construction businesses, I know everybody needs good, solid workers. And one thing we know about these guys is they are workers. And we just got to give them the skills so they can go out there and be game changers in the community. They're getting ready to start using their new training facility. The vision is to get them in here, get them healthy, body, mind, and spirit and then teach them a trade, teach them some skills while we're here. A lot of addicts don't have any trade. They don't know what, you don't know what to do with their hands, you know, basically. And, um, and that's because they started treating their emotions at such a young age. So this is kind of where they do the hands-on stuff. Then we got a computer lab. Where they can take online classes. Um, that they'll come in and do all their certification tests and stuff on this. They'll learn, and I mean, some of these guys don't even have GEDs or anything or high school diplomas, so we can help them get that. And that's what this program long term is about, is teaching people how to become productive members of society. Changing the game, not just for them, but for their families and the community, too. And so, like Will sort of 
touched on, they need your help. They're looking for business owners in the community willing to partner with them to create these sort of apprentice-style programs, especially in those fields that need good workers right now, electrical, plumbing, carpentry, construction. So it's a two-way street. It's a two-way solution, helping those guys get on good, stable footing with a good job, also helping out those industries looking to fill jobs. And what a story they have to tell. It's just I been amazing so far. Yeah, yeah. Just, they just come from such a place where they understand what the guys are dealing with. But we're going to put Will's contact information on this story when you look at the website so if you want to get involved that's where you'll find that more information excited to hear what they'll do next well still to come we move on to sports and the braves gearing up for game two and the odds of the history books are in their favor we'll tell you why coming up to road trust your health to jonathan hawk hey chill what's the matter Man, this is name change. It's stressing me out. Everyone will know we still specialize in Medicare. Yeah, I know that, but what about this? Are you 64.com? On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. It's not often that the Braves feel like they're in a situation where they have a must-win game, maybe because it's become routine for them this season. And when you look at it on paper, the Braves have a history of pulling off a game to win. In 18 games all time in game two of the NLDS, Atlanta is 16 and two. They've won the last four in fashion, pitching straight shutouts since their three nothing win against the Cardinals in 2019. The Braves are no stranger being in the hole one game in. In 2021, they won the next three to beat the Brewers and go on to win the World Series. Saturday was a struggle. They collected five hits, all singles, which has only happened seven times this season. Today, it's all about striking first. Definitely going against a team as tough as the Phillies. Uh, things can kind of get up on you quick, and we had to just slow things down in situations. But, um, yeah, I feel like the break sometimes it could affect it could benefit you and it could uh, it could hurt you, but uh, I guess it depends on how you how you take it. Max Breed gets the start on the mound. That game is just now underway in Atlanta. They head to Philly on Wednesday. While game two may be the game of today, help us choose our game of the week so you can scan that QR code or head to the website to cast your vote. That salute game looks like it might be my choice. Sounds good. Uh, sounds good, Alyssa. And speaking of sports, that's the basketball team at Grovetown High School. They were out giving back again over the weekend. We caught up with them yesterday in downtown Augusta with Compass for Hope, handing out items and helping those who are homeless or less fortunate. The players say community outreach is expected by the coach, and that way each player is making an impact on and off the basketball court. Staying blessed, staying humble, and prayed up. You know, we're able to be good citizens and have good character on and off the court. So that's what it's about. What an amazing example they are. Yesterday was the third weekend the team members have come out to help Com Compass for Hope, and they say they're going to be back next Sunday. Well, we will see a little bit warmer afternoon tomorrow back into the low 80s, but as clouds move in, those highs will drop back off into the 70s. Another full look at that seven-day forecast just after the break. Your safety. Well, live view from our Thurman Dam Cam down the Savannah River. We have clear skies overhead, and temperatures are still in the 70s for us. By daybreak tomorrow morning, though, we are expecting another cool start anywhere from the upper 40s to low 50s for the first part of your day. We should see sunshine the first half of our Tuesday, but later into the afternoon, we will start to notice more cloud cover moving in. Staying nice and dry, though, any outdoor plans looking good to go. And tomorrow afternoon will be a little bit warmer for us, most likely seeing those high temps in the low 80s for us, so a little bit warmer Tuesday. Now, as we head later into the week, those rain chances do start to go up as we head into Wednesday night, but especially Thursday and Friday. This is going to be thanks to just a number of low pressure systems uh, traveling across the region. So cloud cover will bring down those high temps into the 70s. All that rain though luckily clears out for the weekend and we are looking at highs to be back near 80 Saturday and then cooling off again late this week and early next week. Not too bad, Riley. Thanks very much. Our next live update comes at 7 o'clock on NBC 26. Then we're back with more news 12 at 11. We'll see you then.